This is an animated sign I made, us, uh, what is called a scripting sign. Way back, probably about 1984 or 5, certainly the date codes and the chips are sort of in the range of 1981, 82 and 83. And it's based on shift registers uh, and they're just cascaded end to end. And there's a, I'll show you the circuitry and on the other side of it, but um, the reason I made this in the first place, I, I, I loved amusement arcades. I spent a lot of time in amusement arcades because it was just of that era. Uh, and I liked LEDs and signage, so it just made sense that uh, since I'd started collecting the slot machines uh, at that time, I just fancied a, a LED sign. And the LEDs back then cost a fortune, and they're not... It may look quite bright on the camera, but uh, it's it's not by modern standards. Uh, the LEDs were expensive, but very, very dim. Um, more sort of indicator LEDs, but still it looks pretty good. So I'll turn the light on so you can actually see the construction of this. And it's a piece of uh, wood with a uh, black sort of fablon, the, the sort of adhesive black sort of vinyl uh, on it to provide the good matte black background. And I drilled, uh, I drew, actually drew an outline of it, uh, I did a large signature and then just dotted it all round actually, just spaced it all round with dots and uh, then drilled two holes per LED and the LEDs are actually standing quite, they're standing up about five millimetres just under, yeah probably about just under five millimetres round about the sort of eighth of an inch proud because the, the LEDs have those little spacer on them and I can recall I wanted them to sit flush to the wood at the time but the spacer uh, and the size of the drill I had was uh, I ended up quite a friction fit getting the leads through so they're all standing a bit proud and this isn't a great thing because it means if the sign gets scuffed in any way they tend to all get bent in random directions but um, I'll show you the back of it um, and you can take a look at the circuitry so here's the back of the board and it took a long time to make um, apart from the fact that every LED I uh, had to drill two tiny little holes to actually f f thread them through uh, and then uh, make all the circuits up, every single group of LEDs has its own wire. And for some reason, I don't know why, I, I, I used Kynar wire wrap wire with wire wrapping pins. The circuitry uh, starts the power come in. It's a, it comes from a, a, it's an unregulated but rectified supply from the transformer through a fuse. Um, there's a local 5 volt regulator here, then the circuit board has a long chain of 6 4015s. Now 4015 is a CMOS uh, dual 4-bit shift register, but you can cascade them internally. Well, you can, you can cascade the two internal shift registers by an external link to turn it into an 8-bit shift register. In this case, I've got uh, 6 of them end-to-end, -end, which is, is that about 54? No, it's not. It's 48 steps, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's 48 steps total, of which I'm using all of them. Uh, probably just uh, that flurry at the end of the my signature is probably just deliberately using up every single last circuit. And driving the shift register uh, is a 555 timer, which there's two of them. One uh, provides the clock pulse to the processors, the, the shift registers, which actually chases the... Uh, the logic one along them and uh, the other one is used to reset it and that's the the point that the display blanks and then starts again and the slow uh, 555 the one that provides that timer has the wires coming out and then the capacitor in a bit of terminal block it was obviously just for experimentation with values at that time for the length of delay I also noticed that I think I had to reverse it uh, I had to invert the output of that 555 with a transistor a metal can transistor, probably a BC-108 or something like that. Very odd. This was a while back. But, uh, the design of it is such, this is a, a sort of Vero board for integrated circuits and it's got this sort of clear track down the middle and then it's got the uh, strips of about five holes, five or six holes, uh, going out from either all the pins either direction. And I've got these bus bars running along. That will be the power bus bars for the positive, negative uh, data uh, will be going in um, and then looping across from chip to chip. There'll be clock and then there'll be the reset. And there's probably two clocks and two resets because there's, of course, there's the two sets of chips inside, the two uh, sets of shift registers in each chip. 
So fundamentally, yeah, this end is just tied high, the data input, and uh, that data is just that solid block of ones is clocked through, creating this, a filling effect of the display. And then this 555 just, uh, after a predetermined length of time, that it, it would allow the display to fill completely and just hold, because even when it's full completely, it's still basically clocking ones through. That 555 would then ba basically reset it and the display would go blank, uh, release it and then it would start filling out again. And after it's filled out the text, uh, there's one extra output at the end. The very last output goes to a beefier transistor and then drives the whole of the arcade display. And this is like where, uh, you know, I could have used a microcontroller in this in this day. I might have replaced the 555 with a, B, uh, a PIC 12F629. Uh, and then that could have been used to actually independently flash the arcade bit as well and do all sorts of other tricks, even chase sort of patterns along the, 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 the display. But the sections themselves were just about five LEDs per section. It looks very fluid, but um, it's actually lighted in, in distinct sections. But because it happens so quickly, it looks as though all the LEDs are lighted individually. But, uh, each just has its local transistor just hot melt glued on with its uh, suitable resistor for the LEDs. And that uh, mass of wires going back to onto the onto the board, uh, onto the uh, shift registers, and it did take a long time. I can recall this project; it, it seemed a, a monster of a project at the time. One that's slightly daunting, I have to say. One of those ones you start and then you pause and then you continue it again. But I've clearly just to keep track of everything. I've used Tipex and uh, a marker pen just to uh, put the numbers on of each section of the circuitry. So, um, yeah, it ended up looking good though. I think it looked quite nice by the time it was finished.